Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there too am I. We gather this morning in the light and love of Jesus Christ. Maybe. <laughs> the light of Christ be with you all. Well, welcome to our service of worship this morning. I want to begin first by saying a big thank you uh, to Scott and Petra, who were so relieved when I texted them this morning and said, I would be there. <laughs> um, thankfully, we've all kind of come through the COVID, and I, I never came down with it, which I, I, I feel very thankful for and was able to kind of help and look after my family in the process. So uh, it's good to be back, and I thank you for holding the fort <laughs> Uh, well, well, I was away. Um, and indeed, I hear things last week were quite eventful, but also the gospel lived out in how we can be a neighbor uh, to those who are in need. So thank you um, for you, for your presence here. Uh, just a few announcements before we begin. I wanted to let folks know that uh, Bev and Hilton heard um, I have had a little bit of a difficult week health-wise, and um, the families decided not to hold their open house next Saturday after all. I know that some of you were aware that that would be happening. It's their 70th wedding anniversary, and there was to be an open house on the 23rd, but the family's just going to have a quiet dinner with, with them and a few friends instead. Um, and so perhaps if you had a moment this week, it might be nice to offer your congratulations in a different way, maybe a note and or a card or a phone call to them, I'm sure would be much appreciated on the celebration of their 70th anniversary. So we wish them well and we keep them in our prayers um, in this time of ill health. Uh, I also wanted to mention this morning that we will be wrapping up our backpack collection at the end of the month. So if you have some school supplies and backpacks, we would ask that you get those to the church in the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, we will make sure that they get to the Salvation Army. I believe they begin working on 
putting all of those things together and making the backpacks ready for children in our community. Uh, so thank you in advance for your support of that. So I invite us now to come before God as we gather together in worship this morning. Come, open your hearts and listen for the voice of God. Come, open your heart to love one another. Come, open your minds and receive the spirit of wisdom. Come, open your mind to new understanding and insight. Come, open your senses and experience our Creator at work. Come, open yourselves to the work of God around us. Come, open your arms, awake and arise, for God is calling you. Come and join in the worship of our awesome God. Come, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. unfolded through time, from far-flung stars to intimate relationship. Help us as we gather in worship today to know and see you in new ways. In our song and in our silence, give us the courage to face our vulnerabilities and sit with you, confident in your presence and love for us and with us. In Jesus' name, amen. And I invite you to stand this morning as you are able as we sing, Open my eyes that I may see. And may we sing this as a prayer this day. Open my ears that I may hear 
As they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was worried and distracted by her many tasks. And so she came to him and she asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but only one thing is needed. Your sister has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. I can't believe it. I have so much to do. Our guest has arrived and still things are not ready. Oh no, I see some dust under the table. And not all the dishes are put away. There are no flowers in the vases. Did I remember to provide fresh towels in the guest room? Come and sit here, rest a while. There's so much I have to share with you. Thanks, but I, I really can't. I won't be at peace until I'm sure that I've done all I can to make this place presentable. But it's already presentable. You are here, and I want to have some time with you. You just don't understand. I don't want you to think I can't provide for your comfort. I want you to know how much I care by how much I've done for you. I know you care, you always care, but right now you need to rest. Come, sit here and let's talk together. But, but what about the dust, the dishes, the flowers, the towels? Just come and rest for now. I'll help you with those things later. Come on, come and rest. I can't rest, I just can't. I am afraid. Oh, let go of your fears. I've come to be with you. I'm not judging you. I want to tell you about God's healing love. I want you to find some time in your busy life to take a break. Take a deep breath. Relax. Don't be afraid. Because I'm always with you. Often we allow the distractions of this busy life of ours to take us away from connecting with one another and with God. And I invite us this morning to consider how we may lay that before God in this time of confession. Would you pray responsibly with me? Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that the distractions and busyness of our lives make it difficult to listen deeply to your voice. Transform our priorities so that we make space in our lives to be quiet and listen to you. Jesus, seeker of the lost, we confess to becoming so shaped by the values of this age that your call on our lives is increasingly hard to hear. Transform our values so that they are shaped by your concern for the unloved and unlovely and for the weak and powerless in our society. 
Jesus, friend of the poor, we confess that too often any mission and outreach planning is weighed against our economic viability. Transform our thinking so that we risk believing that all things are held together, not by the bottom financial line, but by you. Jesus, bearer of reconciliation, we confess that all too often in our faith communities, we harbor thoughts which estrange and make us hostile towards one another. Transform our hearts so that we are filled with the desire to forgive one another and to make peace. Jesus, source of our faith, we confess that we forget all too quickly the words we say and pray and sing in our time of worship. Transform our lives so that they remain connected to you at all times and in all places. Jesus, Savior and Lord, may the posture of our lives be shaped by listening to you. The goodness of our lives be shaped by love for you. And the service of our lives be shaped by a humility like yours. For all this we pray in your name. Amen. Friends, rejoice and be glad when you hear the good news. For the psalmist declares that those who speak the truth from their heart will abide in God's sanctuary. God hears the difficult truths we have named today. Now let the wonderful gift of God's forgiveness flow through you. And may the abundance of God's mercy and grace set you free to serve God in and with love. Amen. One more step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new, keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you, round the corner of the world I turn. More and more about the world I learn, all the old things that I see. You'll be looking out along with me, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Ladies, as I travel through the good and good, keep me traveling the way I should. Well, I've seen Let us pray. O oh Lord, may my words come from you. May they fall upon open hearts and open minds and open lives, ready to connect with your gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's an ancient Scottish legend that tells the story of a shepherd boy 
He was tending a few straggling sheep on the side of a mountain, and one day, as he cared for his sheep, he saw at his feet this most beautiful flower, one that was more beautiful than any he had ever seen in his life. And so he knelt down and he scooped the flower up in his hands and held it close to its eyes, drinking in its beauty. And as he held the flower close to his face, suddenly he was distracted by a noise. And he looked up before him, and there he saw a great stone mountain opening up right before his eyes. And as the sun began to shine on the inside of the mountain, he saw the sprinkling of the beautiful gems and precious metals that it contained. So with the flower in his hands, he walked inside, and he laid the flower down. And he began to gather all the gold and silver and precious gems in his arms. And finally, with all that his arms could carry, he turned. And he began to walk out of that great cavern. And suddenly, a voice said to him, Don't forget the best. Thinking that perhaps he had overlooked some choice piece of treasure, he turned around again and picked up additional pieces a priceless treasure around him. And with his arms literally overflowing with wealth, he turned and walked about out of the great mountainous cavern. And again, the still small voice said to him, don't forget the best. But by this time, his arms were filled and he walked on outside. And all of a sudden, the precious metals and stones that he carried turned to dust. And he looked around in time to see the great stone mountain closing its doors on him. And the third time he heard the voice, and this time the voice said, You forgot the best. For the beautiful flower is the key to the vault of the mountain. What is the key to which Jesus speaks in our gospel lesson that Linnea so beautifully told this morning? The question that arises in the text so often has been, which is the better part of being faithful? What is the key to being faithful as a follower of Jesus? And when we look to role models for how to express our faith in action, do we pick Martha or do we pick Mary? For years, interpretation has sought to divide these two sisters, Martha and Mary, determining that only one of them can be commended by their Lord, that only one way is important in the kingdom of God. Yet truth be told, we know all too well that we need those who welcome others doing all the things necessary to provide hospitality, the work of our hands, as well as those who take the time to listen to do the work of the heart and soul. And in both women, we see the norms of the day confounded yet again, turned on their head by women who refuse to conform to the norms of the day. Martha, welcoming Jesus boldly as the head of a household might, and Mary, sitting at the rabbi's feet as a disciple might. Both, in their own way, contributing to the table fellowship that they would share. And we can imagine Jesus taking the fruit of Martha's labor that day, bread still warm from the oven, its aroma filling the room with sweet, heady wine, kept just for such an occasion. And wrapped in the adoring gaze of Mary, Jesus transformed those gifts to feed both body and soul. For here, I believe, were two women who simply got it, 
and together made room for the one in whom everything made sense of their lives. Two women who demonstrated that love does not consist in either or, but in both and. Mary and Mark uh, recognized, both of them, that the kingdom of God was near, both through hospitality and devotion. I think it's important to be careful of seeing faithfulness judged as one thing or the other. There is space in our community of faith for people of all different types and needs. And there is space in our own faith story for periods of busy task accomplishment work and other periods of rest, recuperation, and reflection. For the nourishment of our souls is provided via a multitude of pathways. But in his commentary on today's gospel, Reverend Dr. David Lowe offered a very interesting perspective that twigged in my heart and mind. He asserts that what concerns Jesus in his encounter with Mary and Martha is not the choice between service or rest and reflection, but rather the timing of that choice. And he says this, it's important to remember that Jesus, in this moment, is on the way to Jerusalem and to his cross. He will not be with his friends and followers for much longer. He eagerly desires that they hear what he has to say, receive what he brings, and be drawn into the fellowship and abundant life he offers. In this moment, at this time, the better part is simply being attentive to God's divine word, as it walks this earth in flesh in our flesh for a little longer. Jesus is there, right in front of Martha, and yet she misses him in her zeal to serve him. Perhaps Jesus is chiding her, or perhaps rather he is inviting her to a greater freedom, not denigrating her care and hospitality, but blessing her with freedom to seize choice moments in which to live beyond, as well as among her responsibilities. I've been told many times, Lois concludes, that life happens in the interruptions. When we pull out of our regular responsibilities that are both important and consuming, to be caught up in a moment of unexpected joy, or perhaps even sorrow. I think that's part of what is going on here. Jesus is urging Martha, and even more, all of us, not to miss those moments where God's grace bursts through the canopy of our everyday duties to surprise us once again with the depth of God's love and the poignancy of God's mercy. The one thing, the better part, according to Jesus, is that on this occasion Mary chose is that wholehearted opening and attentiveness to the one before her rather than the distracted good works of Martha that came with resentment, it seems. It really is then about timing, ours and God's, and being attentive to the inbreaking of God into our life. When we are fully present to the work of the moment, the person who might just happen to be in front of us, then there will be no division between the spiritual and the social the interior work we do and the exterior work we show, the worship and the work, all become one. Why? It is because, as Paul reminds us in his letter to Colossians, when our focus is on Jesus, he is the one in whom all things are held together. All things begin and end in whom there is no division or distraction. The message puts it so simply like this. 
We look to, at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. By giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side and puts your lives together, whole and holy in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded and steady in that bond of trust, constantly tuned into the message, careful not to be distracted or diverted. Practically speaking, this means that when we can visit the elderly and sit in a kitchen drinking tea and hearing old stories, with the same attention, openness, and reverence that we have before an icon in a chapel, we will be attending to the one thing that is needed in that moment. And when we can hold the hands of our dearest family members while walking on the beach or watching the television in the evening, as we do when visiting dying strangers in hospice beds, we will be attending to the one thing most needed in each of those situations. When we can respond to the neighbor least like ourselves with joy and hope that we experienced Sunday morning when we came together to worship, then we will be attending to the thing most needed in each moment. And when we can respond to the reflection in the mirror with the same humor and care and respect that we do the images of the saints, then we will be beginning to experience the oneness that is in Christ. It is like we read last week, love your neighbor as yourself. My friends, Jesus is indeed the beautiful flower of our faith that carries and offers us the key to the richness of life. Jesus desires for us is to have the hospitality of faith and love and not to allow the busyness and achievements and desire for the riches of this world to blind us and distract us and divert us from his presence and his purpose and his call on our lives. Martha was busy with many things. She was trying to be a gracious hostess. Who could fault her for that? We've all been there. It's hard work. I'm certain Jesus understood and appreciated that. But at that particular moment in time, it wasn't the most fruitful way to be spending it. For the master was in her home. True, she could bake him bread, but he could offer to her the bread of life. And she could set the beverages on the table, but he could treat her to living water. And she could make sure he felt at home, but he could offer her an eternal home. And if it wasn't that Martha wasn't working hard, it was that she wasn't living smart. She let the little distractions get in the way of what was really important. And so if you greet each new day, writes Eric Ritz, as a treasure house to be invested wisely, the journey from Sunday to Saturday turns into an exciting and exhilarating experience. But by the same token, if you do not use time, it will end up using you. No matter who you are, where you live, or what you do, life is impacted most drastically by what you do with the time and what it does with you. Will Rogers once asked, if you only had 48 hours to live, how would you spend them? And the Oklahoma cowboy philosopher replied, one at a time. For such is the reality of time. 
Every day gives us 86,400 seconds, and we must use every one of them as they come, for they will never be seen again. And some of us know that quite poignantly in our lives. But ironically, there is another side to this crucial issue of time for us. There is an altogether different dimension of time which only people of faith can know. There is a time which no wristwatch can measure, but which itself measures how much abundance people find in life. Because beyond the world's time, there is God's time. The basic issue is in learning how to tell one kind of time from another. We must know when to wait, and we must know when to move. And only when we are connected to God can we know the difference. So maybe the message Jesus conveys in this gospel story is that it is really not one thing or the other, but rather whatever we are doing, whoever we are with, we are to attend fully or be fully present to, as it seems Mary was with Jesus that particular day. And so sometimes that will mean sitting in silent wonder at the feet of the master as he teaches in word. And sometimes it will be placing ourselves beside those who do not look so obviously like Jesus but that he asked us to consider as infinitely worthy of our attention. The imprisoned, the sick, the grieving, the outcast. The one thing most needed changes from situation to situation and requires of us a spirit of both hospitality and receptivity. My friends, Mary chooses to listen to the words of the teacher and is not scolded but commended. Martha is invited to put aside the tasks of running a household to do likewise. And both women deserve and receive Jesus' attention and are invited to follow him. What amazing things might happen if we but stop and take the time to listen to Jesus call upon our lives and allow his spirit of love, compassion, mercy, and grace to inform and be the key to life for us in and through our work and our worship of him. Oh, Martha, Martha, you're running around distracted and worried and tense. And Mary's no help and the Lord does not care. He simply wants grace to dispense. Yes, that is the thing we find so hard to hear. There's more to do than there are hours. We cannot keep up. We resent those who don't. And we wish that we had much more power. But what Jesus means when to Martha he speaks is if his disciple you'd be. You'll trust him 100% with your life. Receiving. That's when you'll be free. May it be so for you. And for me. Sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. So Yes. Mm -hmm.
my shepherd and my king be ever praised. Till then I would your love proclaim with every fleeting of scripture remind us there are many ways to give in gratitude for God's goodness to us. Whatever we have to give, let us give joyfully and generously, trusting God to do more than we could ever ask or imagine in the name of Christ, our living Lord. As we receive our offering this morning, let us pray. Living, loving God, Martha offered the work of her hands to Jesus and Mary offered her close attention we bring the gifts that we have this day to offer to you, our gifts of time and talent and energy and our gifts of financial support. We pray that you bless and multiply them. Show us how they can best serve your purposes in your church and in your world, in Jesus' name. Amen. And as our offering is received, I invite us to go back in time with an oldie but a goodie, just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. 
Now, as we come before God in a time of prayer for our world and for the concerns that lay on our hearts, I invite you as I petition this morning with the words, God, with an open heart, for you to respond, open our hearts to you. Let us pray. Lord God, loving God, we come before you in prayer, trusting that your power works in the world in ways we cannot even imagine calling goodness forward, supporting love, and creating justice, even in situations that seem hopeless to us. Draw on our prayers as signs of your spirit at work in our lives. God, with an open heart, open our hearts to you. God of the world and all its peoples, we pray today for those who lift up their voices in troubled nations for those working to bring justice and negotiate peace, for those bringing aid to the vulnerable, and those offering shelter to anyone fleeing violence. Call the powerful to account, O God, and inspire them to hear the voices that cry out in pain and desperation. And God, with an open heart, open our hearts to you. God of our everyday lives, we pray today for our community and our neighbors whose everyday lives have been disrupted by months of pandemic restriction and response. For some who still try to recover from economic realities beyond their control. We remember neighbors whose livelihoods depend on undependable weather systems and those fearing fire and flood or drought over this summer. We, we pray for those facing the tremendous heat wave that crosses much of our world this day. We pray for communities that lack safe drinking water or adequate medical care, in places where there is high unemployment or a worker shortage. Inspire our leaders to combine compassion with good planning and consider the needs of all those who feel desperate. God, with an open heart, open our hearts to you. God of the courageous and compassionate, we pray for those who live out their commitment to the well-being of others day by day, in public service, police, ambulance and fire, health care, education, social work, community organizations and environmental concern. We thank you for their dedication. Support those who feel stress or exhaustion and inspire those who can speak out when they see needs being neglected. God, with an open heart, open our hearts to you. And so, God of neighborhood and nation, we pray for friends and neighbors near and far, for all who travel this summer and for those who find themselves strangers in new communities. We pray for those 
who are grieving, that they may know the comfort of your peace and love. And now we remember in silence those on our hearts who might be facing some kind of challenge this day. We pray, O oh God, that you draw near to each one in deep need and that you equip us to support those whose lives that intertwine with ours, for we are your people embraced by your love, which we claim in the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn for this morning is, Be Thou My Vision, and the prayer for us this day as we go that uh, indeed Jesus may be our vision as we go out into the world to work and to worship, to serve and to love. So I invite us to stand as we sing together. into the world to serve God with love. Be ready to laugh with delight at the good news God has offered you. Make room at your table for unexpected guests. And when the work of discipleship leaves you weary or frustrated, rest in Christ's presence and listen to what he is saying. And the blessing of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit to go with you today and always. Amen.
which makes us what we are.